Many people will never own a home. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I thought we'd have a look at an article from news.com.au which is highlighting, well, the growing unaffordability of housing. The idea of the old, you know, the Australian dream of getting the quarter acre block, having the family, having the kids, getting the nice house, painting the window sills in Mission Brown, it's all disappeared for many people. It's unachievable. It really is. So let's look at a few things before we look at this article. Let's jump and look at just the average prices for property, guys, in the capital cities. And we see here, this is the weekly property prices. Now, all houses together, and this includes the, you know, the very expensive houses, the average is $1 million, $1 million bucks. For three bedders, you're talking 969000 Apartments have been flat, about half a mil, half a mil to 600000 Now, this is all, this is the capital cities. But if we have a look and include the regional areas, well, it doesn't get much better, everyone, sadly. And here's, this is for national everything. It's climbed, look at that climb. Look at that climb. We were under, in October 2020, you were sitting under 600000 for all houses. Now it's shot up to 682,000. As well, three bedroom houses from 518 have gone up to 598,000. 600 grand for a three bedroom house. Even apartments are climbing up 415 for all units. Two bedders, 433,000. Everyone, housing is getting more and more expensive. Now we've just had our first recession. And we're going to discuss how government has intervened in the market. But I'm, I suspect more and more that all the stuff we were looking at in the media, the RBA modeling a 40% price fall, every bank modeling price falls, predicting price falls, senior bank executives selling their houses. I suspect some of that was done or influenced our politicians so they intervened in the market as drastically as they have. I mean, I'll do another video today. Lockdown Keeper has emerged. I made a joke about Mortgage Keeper. I hope it doesn't become real. I really hope that stays a joke, guys. So, uh, this is a chart which I think demonstrates housing affordability very well. In 1990, you could get a place in Sydney for $173,000. 1990 wasn't that long ago to geriatric millennials like myself. Now, or sorry, in September 2020, so a year ago, roughly... 1.1 million dollars so nearly <laughs> what you need for a deposit now wouldn't be would buy your house back in the 90s okay just just remember that so over a five five hundred and sixty percent increase 565 melbourne 518 brisbane 408 Adelaide, 371. So when you're seeing all these people selling their courses, you know, I know the secret to property, you know, particularly when they were young and they bought into one of these things and just rode it up. I mean, okay, that's the secret to property. It's called luck and timing in many regards. And then you build on that. I mean, good on them. Good on the people that have done it, but, you know, realize what's going on here. Now, our wages, the same period, have grown 322% for the blokes and 335% for the missus. So it obviously isn't keeping up with property by any measure. There's a 200% price increase here. One could argue perhaps that's a greater participation of female in the work, women in the workforce. So you have, well, household ability to borrow and spend money has increased and that's inflated housing costs. So there you go, guys. Now let's have a look at this Lorenz curve. This shows you in the 30th of the 6th, 2020, Br Greater Brisbane actually had areas where housing was affordable. This is 30% or less of the household disposable income. Now this is disposable income, not gross income. And it's questionable on if that's, you know, if that'll put you in stress or not. It depends on your, your income, how much you're earning as a household. If you're at the lower bounds, the lower quartile, that 30% is going to make a much more different, a much greater difference to you than if you're at the upper quartile, guys, if you're at the top. But still, Brisbane was the only city at the time, and I think that's going to disappear. A little, few sections in Perth as well. And we're not alone. This is happening everywhere in the world. Everywhere in the world. Or in the Western world. New Zealand, I mean, the poor Kiwis. 
US, Australia, UK, Norway, Sweden, even Canada. Everyone is shooting up. Now, this has social implications as well, everyone, because how many people do you know? Let us know in the comments. How many people do you know that are putting off having kids because they can't afford a house? We don't have the culture here in Australia to raise children in apartments like you do in Europe. Every, you know, there's the expectation that you have a place in the suburb. You've got a little block. You've got some land. If anything, that's exacerbated now by the constant threat of lockdown. So, of course, this is because the government has been come to the rescue. The government uses the housing market to stimulate the economy. You got the cash rate, which isn't technically the government, but you know, close enough. Zero point one percent. You've three percent used to be considered an emergency. You've got home builder, and this is I've got to update this chart, but it's come down a little bit. Building approvals, but look at that spike, guys. Look at look at that. Look at that level in building approvals. We've never been at this level in this chart, not since two thousand and six. Nowhere. This apartment spike here. Oh, hang on. Where do we have it here? This this area here, this big chunk here, that's that's a lot of the apartments. You can't read my chart, I'm missing it up. You've got the first home buyers grants, up to 88 grand and discounts and things. You've got 5% and 2% government loans. I mean, negative gearing. You can't blame people for taking advantage of the system to minimize the tax, and most people do it. And then you've got the super withdrawals, which I bet juiced up the market a little bit. Which I can understand why, but you've got you to realize if, if you know, you weren't forced to lock all your money away in super, how many people could have gotten a property a lot earlier? And you've got reduced housing supply. You've got councils crying poor. We've got housing issues, housing issues, but they're not making it easy for you to build houses for developers to develop. You've got greenies going and protesting low-cost housing developments for political reasons. And you've also got the mortgage loan deferrals, which have... Reduce supply on the market. So this isn't a, we don't have a free market here in Australia. Don't don't kid yourself. All your commie friends who are blaming capitalism for being you know lazy and and not having a work ethic. It's not the capitalism guys. It, well, that I'd say that's in you in a lot of cases. But we've got an intervention, a market that's high, heavily intervened in. So house prices are now unaffordable for many average Australians. A sobering report by real estate professionals has said property prices are increasingly unaffordable and Australians may never have own a home. I think that's just the K-shaped recovery, everyone. That's, that's going to be the two-speed economy that we have here in Australia that's going, to, that's going to be exacerbated. I think some people would be shocked at the earnings difference between some Australians. First-time home buyers are too aware buying their first pad right now is a struggle. But that's been confirmed by the industry itself, with real estate professionals darkly warning large numbers of average Australians may never be able to enter the property market, given the exorbor exorbitant rise in prices. Well, here's the issue as well. How much of this is just FOMO that we're reading here? How many real estate agents aren't getting enough property listed, so they want to generate FOMO to get people in? But based on historical precedent, I'd say there's a higher risk of the government intervening and bubbling up the housing market than not. That sobering residential reality comes as it was confirmed Sydney house prices had soared. The average house in the Harbour City is now going for 1.1 million with units at 800,000. 800,000. A typical Sydney house is now worth 117,000 pricier than it was at the, at the end of February. Industry organizations and Australian Property Institute and tech firm, the Search People surveyed almost 600 property valuers across Australia to gauge their attitudes to the property market. Property valuers conduct detailed inspections of home, of houses, of homes, looking at the number of rooms and size, as well as the property's condition to ensure it's fit to be bought or sold. It's priced correctly. And if any improvements need to be made, to make it market ready. Almost half think property is unaffordable for average Australians. The report found 59% of valuers believe that Australia, the Australian housing market was currently in a bubble, the majority, while 55% thought home buyers were overcapitalizing on their purchase. 
Most damning, 43% of valuers said property was now essentially out of reach for the average Australian. The likelihood of owning a home is becoming increasingly low as residential property becomes unaffordable for the average Australian, the firm stated. Well, here's the thing. As an average Aussie, if you can't even get afford your home, what loyalty do you have to your nation? They're, they're all these idiots are arguing, oh, you know, nationalism uh, is the greatest threat to all the, the Western democracies. Well, here's the problem. If people have got no hope, if they've got no investment, if they don't think they can have a family, what would you do? You know, imagine an average Aussie called up to fight for his country, you know, drafted into some stupid war. Uh, you know, doesn't even can't even afford a house at home. If he's a white male, he's blamed for everything. Yeah, good luck. Uh, good luck. I think there'll be a lot of if they ever bring back the draft, there'll be a lot of dodges. Aussies may never be able to enter the property market. Do you believe Australian property is still affordable for the average Australian? Forty uh, forty-three percent said what? It said yes, and fifty-seven percent said no. Professional values believe Australia's residential real estate prices will continue to rise despite serious affordability and sustainability concerns, the report added. There may be a bubble, but in the short term at least, that bubble doesn't seem set to burst, said the search people's Raf Birding. Most respondents believe a boom is set for the Australian property sector. However, the majority also believe Australia is currently witnessing the makings of a property bubble. A combination of record low interest rates and buyers' uncertainty of investing in other alternatives is fueling high demand. This, coupled with low supply, is driving a FOMO, fear of missing out, for many buyers. You've got to understand, I'm, more and more, I'm saying that Australians consider property gold. That, th this is the Australian, Australian gold, guys. This is what people invest in. As a result, in some cases, properties are being snapped up significantly above asking price within moments of being listed, he said. Oh, boy. Do you believe property values will increase, decrease, or stay the same? Okay, and what's increased? So, 10% or more is the dark black to the blue. So, there you go. Sydney, over 60%. Melbourne, over 60%. Brisbane, over 70%. Just 60% in Adelaide, or 57 Perth, over 60% as well. There you go. So, is this a sign that we've hit the peak of the market, guys? And maybe there's a correction under the way. Or is it just, should the real question be, what else could the government pull out to prop up the bubble? Almost two-thirds said they saw continued strong growth for property values across Australia's six main capitals in the next six months. The report said this was a worrying trend and would disadvantage many prospective buyers. More than 60% of those surveyed in Sydney, Melbourne and Perth said they expected prices to rise. In Brisbane, it was stark at 70%. Well, that's the old story. Sydney and Melbourne rise, and then the other cities catch up. Brisbane catches up. We're the poor cousin that comes up later. So, with around 12% of those saying prices in the Queensland capital could go up by more than 10%. Adelaide is the most affordable capital, but even here, more than 55% of valuers have said the only way is up for house prices. API Chief Executive Amelia Hodge said the market was firing on all cylinders. With record low interest rates, we're seeing more and more buyers entering the market. This is great news for Australian, Australian selling property, especially with values on the rise in most sectors and selling times decreasing across most capital cities. More than half of those surveyed said Australians should be allowed to access their super to pay for a property. I mean, this is the thing. We should, if we're going to do that, just abolish super. Just get rid of it and make the businesses compete for our business. And, you know, reduce the, re increase the tax-free threshold. There you go. Forget having these complicated schemes that just, you know, pay union control and bank control organizations, have little cushy, cushy board jobs. You know, make them actually compete in the free market to incentivize Australians to invest. How many Australians do you think will put money in super? Or how many do you think will put it in housing? It all go to housing. The super funds would be fighting. They'd have to work bloody hard to get you to put their money in. And they wouldn't know how. They, they wouldn't have the capabilities because they've had, they've, you know, they're fat and lazy and have had such a free ride for so long. To be good, a good shakeup. So, Sydney average house prices are now 1.1 million. Data from property research firm CoreLogic released on Tuesday showed prices 
for all categories of housing rose 3% for the month, one of the largest monthly rises on record. The median price for a Sydney home is now $1.186 million, with the median unit at $782, according to the data firm. CoreLogic head of research Tim Lawless said the median house price would likely hit the $1.2 million mark soon, even as early as next month. It wouldn't take much growth. It's nearly there, he said. May's bump in prices was a modest slowdown for March, when values climbed at the fastest pace in 32 years, but the growth still dwarfed price, ri price rises across the rest of the country. Sydney's price rise was 66% higher than in Melbourne and about 36% higher than the national average. Mr. Lawless said he expected rises to moderate over the coming months as buyers became priced out of the market. It will continue to it will reach a point where fewer buyers can compete, he said. Housing supply was also beginning to increase in many suburbs, and a further increase would take pressure off buyers to bid up prices. And this is the this is the real flag there, right there. That that's what you want to watch for, everyone, as housing supply ramps up. The number of properties for sale are lower, uh, much lower than they were. So if supply starts kicking back on, there's going to be more um, product available. So that will hopefully reduce prices or at least reduce pressure to shoot up prices. But here's the thing. I mean, investors, probably we're, we're going to see it in the investment stock, I'd say, more than anything. How many of those units that are not making any money? But how many people want to buy a unit to live in now? I mean, sure, it sounds good, but if you're going to be locked down, do you want to be in a unit or would you rather even be in a tiny block? Even if you have somewhere outdoors, you can go. A shortage of listings has been one of the biggest drivers of the recent price boom, Mr. Lawless said. Backing up the API report that Perth is set for a big rise in prices was an analysis com by comparison website Finder. In, property, in Perth, property prices were predicted to rise 8% over the next seven months adding almost $80,000 to the value of properties, giving them an average value of 609000 The ABS data from April showed the average deposit needed to secure a mortgage was 106000 an increase of 16% since January 20, 2019. 106 grand, guys. So if we jump, we jump back to what property prices were in 1990, it means 106. So you could buy a house in Brisbane for the average deposit, in Adelaide for the average deposit, in Perth, not quite Canberra, a Hobart, you could, not quite Darwin. You are close than Darwin. You weren't too far from Melbourne. <laughs> okay. So, oh boy. The ACT had the largest home deposit increase since 2019, with the upfront amount required swelling to by 24% to 117, New South Wales up by 23% to 128. So there you go, everyone. Many people won't afford, won't ever get into a house, won't be able to afford one. The worry is that people FOMO in now borrow way too much, buy way too much house than they need or can afford, and then get squeezed out of the market when we have a correction or if something happens. But then again, you know, what taps will the government turn on the next time something happens? At least if you're buying a physical asset, you've got some protection from the insane amount of inflation that the government will create. Aussie gold, guys. So what's the solution to this? Well, the solution, long term, we need to get off that property dependency, guys. We need to get off it. We need to create special economic regions to experiment with reduced government intervention. I know some people are calling for like a gold-backed currency or gold currency, using gold as money. I can't see it happening. I can't see, I can't see politicians willingly giving up the magic power of fiat and to be the heroes to the rescue. And I can't see any majority of Australians voting for that, everyone. They like their intervention. They like their house prices going up. The people that can't afford it, well, they're just lazy. It's their problem. You know... All those geniuses that have that have done so well, so well, buying property in the 90s and then just sitting on it for 30 years. And then, of course, they'll make a fortune selling a Udemy course on it or a Facebook course. Isn't that the trick? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. 
You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.